Hello and welcome to my new and improved slide on the cardiac cycle. So what I tried to do here is put um, all the events or most of the events that occur in a cardiac cycle on a one slider. Um, I know it's sometimes hard to follow um, a physiological concept over multiple slides. It's hard to refer back uh, and compare. So what I tried to do is put everything in that cardiac cycle on a one slider. So in the center, we're kind of using the pictures. So the pictures are going to help us see when uh, chambers are either contracted or relaxed. It's going to help us see uh, if the valves are open and closed uh, during the three major uh, events, atrial systole, ventricular systole, and then relaxation. Uh, in the boxes, I have kind of the step-by-step -step events that occur during those three periods. Uh, I'll also refer over in the corner here, uh, this shows the volumes uh, in the ventricle in red, and then it lines up with an EKG on top. Uh, so hopefully this will allow you to kind of compare um, what the heart might look at look like during these events. We can then look back and see where we are as far as an EKG is concerned, and then hopefully better understand the volumes um, moving through the heart. Okay, so let me just point out the EKG. So we're going to start right before the P wave. So right before the P wave is when you have the sinoatrial node or pacemaker in the upper wall of the right atrium uh, send out a wave of depolarization. Uh, we're going to see the P wave uh, and again that's going to represent atrial depolarization. Uh, then from there, it's going to travel through the rest of the cardiac conduction path. So it's going to go AV node, bundle of his, bundle branches, Purkinje fibers. Then we're going to get the QRS, which represents ventricular depolarization. And then we're going to get the T, which represents ventricular repolarization. Now notice the events line up with these. So when you get the P wave you're going to have the atria contract. So we have this period here kind of shaded in blue representing atrial systole. When we get the QRS and the ventricles depolarize, we're going to get this purple shaded period here, which is ventricular systole. And at the same time, we're going to have atrial diastole. Then after we get the T, which is ventricular repolarization, we're going to have the ventricles relax. All right, so that therefore everyone's relaxed during that green period. Okay, so let's begin. We begin with the SA node uh, and then atrial depolarization and we get the P wave. So right now we are right there at that P wave. After that, we're going to get contraction or systole of the atria. All right, so again, that's what the name of this period is, atrial systole. So the atria are going to contract. So again, that's going to happen at, after the P wave. Uh, we can look at the picture of the heart here and see that the atria are indeed contracting. Uh, if we go prior, so during the end of the previous cycle, uh, we see that they're relaxed. So here, the atria are relaxed. Here, the atria are in systole or contracted. What will that then uh, happen? The pressure inside those atria will go up. And notice I put a little arrow here in P representing the increase in atrial pressure in both the atria. That pressure is going to allow us to add about 25% to the ventricle. So these are the numbers I like to use. They're pretty arbitrary. They're your basic resting uh, volumes. Um, but in order to move that 20%, we need the atria to have a higher pressure than the ventricles. Notice these valves are already open. So again, these AV valves open during the relaxation period of the previous cycle. So the valves were open. Uh, we were already filling a bit, we're just going to be adding now the 20% to the 105 that was already in that ventricle. Now notice we could see that down here 
on our volumes. So here's the 105, so that was at the end of the previous cycle, so that was basically here. We had 105 milliliters in each ventricle. We're going to add the 25, so we see that volume in the ventricles go up to 130, all right, because we added the 25 to the 105. And remember that volume, when we're full, has a name, end diastolic volume. So end diastolic volume being the volume in each ventricle when they are done being relaxed. So the ventricles are at the end of their diastole. How much is in there? 130 on each side. Okay. Um, so we are now right here. All right, we added the 25 to the 105, we're at 130. AV valve still open, semilunar valves closed. We're going to enter ventricular systole. So we have the QRS, depolarization of the ventricle. That's going to cause the ventricles to contract. All right, so we see here these little arrows showing that the ventricles are beginning to contract. When they begin to contract, the atria are going to be relaxing. So again, we don't see the atrial repolarization on an EKG, but that occurs at the same time as the ventricular depolarization. So we notice that the atria indeed relax, all right, because they repolarized. That's going to lower the pressure in the atria, but we're going to raise the pressure in the ventricles. And when that occurs, we're going to get the AV valves closing. So pressure goes up in the ventricles, pressure goes down in the atria. That allows the AV valves to close, and we hear that as the first heart sound, the lub of the lub dub. Once we close the AV valves, all the valves are closed. So we have what's known as isovolumetric contraction. So no blood can enter because the AV valves are closed. No blood can leave because the semilunar valves are closed, but the ventricles are still contracting. So what that allows us to do is really raise the pressure so we can then open the semilunar valves. All right, so now we have the AV valve still closed. We raise the pressure so much that we can open up these two semilunar valves. Once we have the semilunar valves open, we can eject. How much do we eject? That's known as stroke volume. So that's the volume ejected from a ventricle in one beat. So it's 70 on each side for our purposes. So if we refer back to our volume graph, we were at 130. We ejected the 70. So we removed the 70 from the 130, and now we are left with 60. And that is known as end systolic volume, because it's the volume in the ventricle when it's done or at the end of contraction. Okay, so we ejected the stroke volume. Now, basically, we want to start gearing up for another round, so we need to start to refill. So we're going to go from this situation where we have the AV valves closed, the semilunar valves open, we ejected the stroke volume. Now we want to relax the ventricles, so they repolarize, so we get the T wave. When they repolarize, they relax, or enter diastole. When the ventricles enter diastole, their pressure goes down. So we see that the pressure is going down in the ventricles. When the pressure goes down in those ventricles, that's going to close the semilunar valves. Because now the pressure in the ventricle is below the pressure, in this case if we're looking on the left side, the pressure in the aorta. So once that pressure in the ventricle is below the pressure in the aorta, Semilunar valves close, we get the second heart sound, the dub, and now we have all valves closed again. So AV valves still closed, semilunar valves just closed, but we are relaxing, the ventricles are relaxing. 
And what that allows us to do is drop the pressure even more in the ventricles. And when that pressure drops even more in the ventricles, that'll reopen the AV valves because now the pressure in the ventricle is below the pressure in the atrium. And that allow us to start to refill again. So now we were here after ejection of stroke volume. Here, this little interval here is the isovolumetric, and we start to refill again. How much do we refill? We're going to add about 45 to the 60. So this would be the 45 passive filling to get us back up to the 105 that we are at right here at the beginning of the cycle. All right, so hopefully this helps. Um, again, it, it's, it's a lot of events, but they have to work this way. So you just go step by step, um, and it should make sense. Uh, you also want to kind of group these events. So for example, um, when do the AV valves close but the semilunar valves open? You should understand why that would occur during ventricular systole. Uh, when to the, do the semilunar valves close and then the AV valves open? That must be during relaxation. All right. So if you go through this a couple times, uh, I tried to make this video as short as possible so you could possibly re-listen to it or re-watch it uh, a few times. Uh, hopefully this clarifies uh, this pretty difficult topic uh, called the cardiac cycle.